Howdy folks, I'm Keith Bowen and this is Hard Rock University. Now last weekend my brother and I went out to the Dreamer Prime looking for some more. We got some. It's not great, but it's good enough and consistent enough that it's good for testing, which was the primary purpose. It was not to make money, it was to get material for testing. Now, I have tested each bucket that we got. We got about 350 pounds total. I crushed it up, tested each bucket. They were all pretty consistent. I split it down to one bucket, then blended it several times. And so now I have what I feel some pretty consistent material that I can run tests on where I can really compare apples to apples in terms of the, the material is going to be pretty close in each test. Now, the first thing I want to do is test a variety of possible variables on the hand panning and any other gravity, wet gravity techniques so that I know that I've optimized that. Now, one of the things that people tend to agree with is gold will float. And that is true. Uh, Dan Hurd has a great video on it. Uh, the link, well, I don't know if it's a link or just an address, will be in the description. I highly recommend it. He, uh, he does a great job and shows how really decent sized pieces of gold can float fairly easily. Now, in order to minimize this, most people will add either jet dry or Dawn dishwashing soap to their panning water or to their operational water. You know, obviously you can't when you're dredging a river. But when you are got your concentrates and you're working them, a lot of people will do it. I usually do it when, I, when I'm hand panning. The question is, which works better? How much do you need? Is there too, what's too little? What's too much? And I also want to test something called a flocculant. Now, it's not that important in panning, but when you're recycling water and it gets dirty really fast, that's a, a real issue at times. And so by adding something called a flocculant, it causes the real small particles to stick together into larger particles that settle out of the water a lot quicker and easier. And so it's, it's highly desirable if it doesn't screw up the recovery. And the question is, when it causes things to stick together, does it also cause gold particles to stick to dirt and therefore get washed away instead of being separated? So I need to test that too. And once I get this tested, then the question is going to be what mechanical steps on the hand panning are optimal and that will allow me to come up with my latest version of the hand panning methodology. Uh, I've learned a lot of things recently, how to make it quicker, easier, etc. And so uh, to improve that and optimize that, I know, need to know where to start and then do a lot of testing on what works and what doesn't in the panning. So this is phase one, testing different chemicals in the water to see how they affect the recovery of gold. So here's the setup. I have three identical situations. In this one, I have nothing but plain tap water, two gallons each. In these, I have uh, half a teaspoon of Dawn dishwashing detergent and two gallons of water each. And in this one, I have half a teaspoon of jet dry finish in two gallons of water, both tubs. And later, I'm going to check the effect of super clarifier on whichever one does the best. I suspect that it even improves it more, but we will find out. This will let us know how these different things work when it comes to actually recovering gold. In each pan, is the fine screen from one cup of the blended Zone 7 high grade out at uh, the Dreamer Prime. Now, let's get panning.
Now when you're getting close to the last little bit here, quite often in that corner right there you'll see a little bit of gold. You see a light colored spot there. That is actually gold showing up. Here's a close up. And that's a little bit of gold sitting right there in the corner. When you see that, you know you've got some decent ore. Okay, so let's see what the results are the second time. You may notice the one on the left is no longer green. <clears throat> the video of the first run through got screwed up. I also noticed that the green pan, things behaved a little different. So I searched around until I could find another black pan and eliminate that variable. Now, when I first panned this out, that had a little bit of a line there. And when I went to dampen it again to allow me to show it to you better against a darker background, at least half the gold floated away. Not surprising with untreated water, but it actually got pretty good in the first results. You might be able to see it a little bit better there in the shadows. This is the dawn, and it was the best on this run. It was the second best the last run but a fairly close runner-up to the jet dry last run. Much more gold. Let's see what happens when I dip a little water in it and roll it around. See how the gold just stays there? That did not happen with the untreated water. Now here's the jet dry. It came in intermediate. That was actually not a whole lot better than the untreated water initially of this run here. It did the best in the first run through. Now let's see what happens when we put a little water on this. This is with the jet dry. Ah, I see gold floating. So, so far, the dawn seems to have a slight edge. You can see that gold floating there, possibly. I don't know if you can or not. It's some of the fine stuff. But okay. There we go. So far, the dawn seems to edge out the jet dry. But I still have some things to test here. Now, for this test, I've put in a half a teaspoon of the super water clarifier in each one of the three sets of tubs. It's half a teaspoon per two gallons of water and we'll see how that changes things. We'll also see how fast it makes things settle out. Okay, the preliminary flocculent results are not good because as you can see it's still not really clarifying real well but you can see the effects of the flocculent in that you can see those little granule like looking things that's the flocculent doing its job but anyhow it didn't look like it was doing too well so I put one teaspoon total of flocculent for two gallons of water and it was clearly aggressively doing its job but it seemed to really hinder the gold results. Here's the plain water with just flocculent, dramatically less results. Some of that may be due to the fact that the earlier test things have been soaking for a while. They had to head off to work or actually pan things and they soaked for eight hours. This I started with dry and then just wet it immediately. But that's not good. Here's the uh, um, Dawn dishwashing detergent. Actually not that much better than the uh, plain water. And this is the jet dry. Clearly 
all three did worse, dramatically worse, with the flocculant, especially in the smaller particle sizes. So, flocculant, especially large quantities of flocculant, is definitely a bad idea. Which is unfortunate, because flocculant can be very useful in a process situation. Not that critical in panning. You can, you know, just use fresh water. But when you're using a process, especially with limited water, it's nice to be able to put something in it to help clear it up. So that did not work well. I'm going to try one more test with just a very little bit of flocculant in it, just to see. Because I did some tests earlier and it didn't seem to make a difference. So let me see, maybe it's just way too much. Okay, and I have the side-by-side -side tests of Dawn and the clarifier. And by using less clarifier, we definitely improved the results some. Here's the pure Dawn. And we seem to have a little bit more gold, but what I also notice under the loop is more of the really fine gold. And then here we have the clarifier, the flocculant, with the Dawn. And it's not that much less. I mean, it's within basically the experimental error, you know, sample error. But I don't see as much of the really fine gold. So I would say if you really need flocculant for some reason, use as little as you can get away with. Now let's see what the optimum amount of jet of uh, Dawn is. Okay, here's the results of the Dawn concentration test. This is the result for one quarter teaspoon per two gallons of water or an eighth of a teaspoon per gallon. This is half a teaspoon per two gallons of water, or a quarter teaspoon per gallon. And this is one teaspoon for two gallons of water, or about a half a teaspoon per gallon. Now, they're all kind of close. No huge dramatic differences. But I would say that the best is the higher concentration. So let me go to two teaspoons per two gallons of water. Well, by increasing the dose to two teaspoons per two, and a, uh, per two gallon tub, I really don't see much in the way of difference. So I don't see any reason to keep continuing up. Let me go down and see what I when I start losing it. Okay, here is one quarter teaspoon per two gallons, or eighth of a teaspoon per gallon of Dawn. And this is one sixteenth of a teaspoon per gallon. That looks at least as good. Well, now we got to go down even more. Well, we finally have a change. My back is happy about that. This is the sixteenth of a teaspoon per gallon. That's a thirty-second of a teaspoon per gallon. Significant difference. And coincidentally, a significant difference in the behavior of the water. See how the suds are lasting much better there than there. So that gives you a good way to kind of rough calibrate your water. That's about enough for today. I'm going to go do essentially the same thing with the jet dry tomorrow. Okay, well we've got bright sunlight here in the morning, so I got the Bago's backdrop. This is one eighth teaspoon per gallon of jet dry. 
one quarter gallon, one quarter teaspoon per gallon of jet dry, and one half teaspoon per gallon of jet dry. They look fairly similar. What I'm going to try now is take the eighth teaspoon per, per gallon of jet dry and eighth teaspoon per gallon of Dawn and see what happens. See if we get some synergy. Okay, so I added some Dawn to the uh, jet dry to see if I got much synergy. This was the pure jet dry at a quarter teaspoon per gallon. This was quarter teaspoon per gallon jet dry, eighth teaspoon Dawn. And this is the same thing. Quarter teaspoon jet dry, eighth teaspoon Dawn. Because this one actually looked better, but it's probably just sample variability. It has a couple big chunks in there for this <laughs> big chunks. Anyhow, so I don't see any significant benefit in adding the Jet Dry to the Dawn. So there you have it. Both Jet Dry and Dawn work. The Dawn works at lower concentrations and it is cheaper to begin with. So economically Dawn is the best. Jet dry has the advantage of it doesn't suds much. That's a little bit of a pain in the butt. I'll do some testing later to see whether or not the foam actually acts like frost flotation, but that's for a later video. And the concentration is basically 1 16th of a teaspoon of Dawn per gallon of water seems to work well. The jet dry you know, quarter to an eighth of a teaspoon per gallon. Uh, adding them together doesn't seem to really help too much. And although I didn't test the lower limit, it may take it lower on both of them, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't seem worth the effort. Flocculin, on the other hand, a clarifier that gets stuff to clump together and settle out, does not seem to be good for recovery. It's, it's a, not a good idea if you can possibly avoid it. If you do need to use a flocculant in the process, I'd go with the lowest concentration you can possibly get away with. So that's the conclusions. Now I'm going to take this and now start working on the panning techniques um, and, and what works best there. And that'll be uh, either my next video or the one after that. Uh, I've used up almost all of that bucket of um, blended material, so I'm going to have to make another bucket of blended material so that I can then do the other tests. But I want to test panning techniques and come up with the best panning technique I can give you at this time. So this is the total gold I have. And I did about 35 pounds of material. And if that is more than five one hundredths of a gram, I'd be at an ounce to the ton. I'm looking at that saying that's, that's closer to a tenth of a gram or more. So we're looking pretty good at this point. We'll wait for assays and when I do actual production testing where I can weigh it more reliably. But I'm pretty pleased with that. Happy prospecting and keep it safe out there.